the system we're living in is incredibly violent. Um, you talk to any First Nations person about their lives and they can tell you stories about the violence they live every day. So the, really violence isn't part of this equation at all. What we're talking about is, is planetary violence, as some people say ecocide, you know, and people are, are saying, no, I'm not going to let uh, all the species around me die off. I'm going to stand up and protect them. Planetary violence? Ecocide fighting back for the species? You know you're in Vancouver when this is the chit chat on a doorstep. Well, this wasn't just ordinary idle chit chat. This was at a training camp to teach radical activists how to physically stop pipelines. Remember, these pipelines were the subject of the last BC election. The pro pipeline liberals crushed the anti pipeline NDP. They were the subject of the National Energy Board hearing, which approved the Northern Gateway Pipeline. So, what do you do? when you lose democratically and lose it to the court? Well, you talk about considering violence, and that's where our friend Ada Slavinsky met these folks. Ada joins us now from Vancouver. She's a hard news contributor. Ada, you went out there amongst the crazies. Tell me what they said. Are they going to get violent? Are they going to have a riot? Are they going to sabotage pipelines that proceed despite their howling not to proceed? Well, Ezra, the nicely packaged story that they're presenting to me is that they're trying to be nonviolent. They're just trying to protect the trees and the forests and the rivers and First Nations land and that kind of thing. But when you dig a little deeper and you, you look at some of the people who are actually attending these events, they are talking about violence and they are talking about doing um, some really scary things. And that's why I wanted to ask them and I wanted to say, you know, you, you want to protect... Um, the environment, but what I want to protect is the legacy for my daughter that she's not going to walk into the street and be threatened by someone burning a cop car mm. or, or that kind of thing. What now you went, this was the whole thing. This was a conference. I mean, they banned you from taking your cameras into part of it, but they did have a press conference. Let's take a quick look at a press conference and you can tell me afterwards who these people were. Sure. Some of the people who attended this weekend's events are advocating for violence. One gentleman actually said he wanted to burn a cop car. Do you support that? Do you agree with that? I didn't hear. I was at the events. I didn't hear anybody say they wanted. Were you not here for the pipeline training this weekend, though? There was various workshops. I didn't hear anybody say that they were talking about events that happened in New Brunswick. No, at the at the Russian Hall, I was there on Saturday speaking with people, and there was a, a guy who went into the event and he said he wanted to burn a cop car. Well, that's his own personal opinion. That's not my opinion. What would you do if somebody within your group uh, tried to... I don't think anybody in my group would try to do that because the cops... But he attended the workshop. I think you've so asked your questions. There's a lot of media here. I'd like you to uh, give everyone a chance. They didn't like you asking those questions. They didn't like you with your cameras. They didn't let you take your cameras in everywhere. Who was this event for? It clearly wasn't for the Sun News Network. What kind of folks attended, Anna? Well, Ezra, this was uh, Frida Houston. She represents the Unistoten camp, um, which is a small group within a larger First Nations band that uh, is against the pipeline. And the other media were asking, you know, nice questions about what this means for First Nations and, and kind of what their plan is, sticking along their talking points of we're going to do peaceful blockades and, you know, nonviolent uh, events. But you know, I, I wanted to ask, I've, I've spoken with people, and I'd like to just play a clip for you um, of one of the men that I did speak with at this training camp, and, and here's what he told me that he was actually prepared to do. Okay. I said, sure, I'll do it. You would set a cop car on fire? Sure. Well, I don't know if it's going to stop a pipeline or not, but... And, and why do you think that's justified? Well because I get my charges reduced. So what does that even a, mean, Ada? How do you get your charges reduced by torching a police car? Well, I mean, to be honest, I think that this guy's a little bit off his rocker here. Um, I'm not sure that, that his story totally checks out with uh, some of the other things that he was telling me, but he, he does want to cause a disturbance. He does want to start a riot, set a cop car on fire, and I've spoken with police here in Vancouver and they're telling me that they're concerned because this is exactly the kind of people and the kind of actions they saw in the Stanley Cup riots. Right. So 
maybe, maybe we'll take the, the protesters at their word and say that they want to be peaceful. Okay, we accept that. We don't have proof otherwise at this point. But people who are joining this cause and who are ushered into these events and attending the workshops do have other motives and mm -hmm. they want to cause mischief. There's graffiti all around the city saying no pipelines um, on bus shelters and businesses. So this is starting to replicate what we we, what we saw in 2011 with the with the Stanley Cup riots and you know there was multiple arrests 101 people were, were injured and you know one person critically you know police officers injured it's uh, it's something that we're seeing the the developments happen um, in in the same way that we saw there so it's, you know, it's very frightening and it reminds me of a lot of the things I've been seeing over the last two years it reminds me of the Occupy Vancouver Occupy Toronto sort of street rabble that are some of them are clearly a little bit mentally touched others of them just like a fight and like that last guy who was rambling on about torching a cop car, that reminds me of these Occupy. And he may just be cannon fodder who is sort of turned and set by some smarter strategist, some guy orchestrating things. It reminds me a bit of the crime spree at the Westover uh, Pipeline Station in Ontario. And of course, as you say, it, it, it reminds you of the Vancouver riots, the Rexton riots. I don't think it's idle because there's so much big money, Ada, from foreign lobby groups that has failed to stop these pipelines peacefully. I have no doubt that Greenpeace, for example, who specially is breaking the law, will try to break the law again. Uh, we only have about a minute left. Tell me, do you think police are going to take this seriously, or are they the kind of cops that we saw too much during the Occupy Wall Street events? Oh, don't touch it. Let them have their say. You know, sure, if they were other protesters, we'd put them in paddy wagons, but this is political. How are police reacting? Well, Ezra, I think they're prepared. Um, Brian Montague, the spokesperson I spoke with yesterday, said that they've been monitoring these groups. Um, he does think that most of them have been peaceful so far, and he's not worried about the large majority, but they are monitoring a small minority of people um, who's, who are kind of on their watch list, and familiar faces that are showing up at things like Occupy, um, a different protests, no one is illegal. There's there's the same, same crew kind of coming up that they're keeping an eye on and I, I really think they don't want a repeat of what happened at the Stanley Cup riot so that I mean that was a big embarrassment for the police here so I hope they're prepared I think from what they're telling me they're prepared um, but I don't think that we're going to see a completely peaceful protest. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. By the way, blocking a highway, blocking private property, occupying grounds, that's not peaceful in my books. That's a crime. Ada, you stay on this, but you stay safe too, okay? I will. Thanks.